as Kevin Glenn's knee injury and Milt Stiegel's cracked ribs should be ready to go against Saskatchewan. Finally, the Blue and Gold's medical staff reports some positive news. Uh, Milt Stiegel has recovered from cracked ribs. He's going to play. And quarterback Kevin Glenn has also been given the green light to return after arthroscopic knee surgery. As for Milt Stiegel, the cracked ribs are no longer causing him any pain whatsoever. And Stiegel knows there will be a big target on his chest when he returns to the lineup. When I play, I'm not going to be thinking about, oh, I don't want to get hit. I'm going to go out there and play like I always play. You know, you start thinking about those things, it takes away from your game. So you have to make sure that you're just going out there and playing reckless. You, you, you can't be thinking about not getting hurt. We're not going to game plan everything for Milt just as we hadn't in the past. But he's, he's going to be a guy that we know what he does. And, and um, I know that he and Kevin have worked well in the past before. I know there's certainly uh, ways to take and uh, attempt to take him out of it by uh, uh, certain things that people can do in coverages. And if that happens, then other guys have to be able to step up. The people have always such kind things to say you know, out, out in Saskatchewan, so they, they make us feel really at home and warm and cozy. And My favorite color is green. Well, back in the 2002 Labor Day Classic, the Bombers' Omar Evans was a member of the Riders, and in that game, he got into a fight with Milt Stiegel. That's just because Milt used to try to punk me when I was little, you know, when I was uh, when I was a little rookie or whatever. So, you know, so I just had to show, you know, show him that hey, I'm, uh, hey, I'm a little rookie, but I'm, or you know, a second year player, but I'm out here holding my own, you know. Man, I don't like to beat up on other people's kids, so I don't beat up on anybody who's under six feet. So no, I didn't beat up on him. I probably burnt him a couple of times, and he got mad at me. I am six feet. I just <laughs> want to get that corrected. I am six feet tall. Thank you. He, he was jealous because. Uh, he thought I was old, and I mean, he knew I looked good, but he couldn't believe an old man could run that fast and run by him. But, you know, we made friends, and we made up. Uh, I made him wash my car and do a couple other things, but he's happy to be on my side now. Uh, of course, there's a lot of hoopla and, and hype uh, going into the game, but for the most part, that's, that's, that's the media, the fans, the community. Uh, as a team, we have to keep our focus. We can't let everything that goes on outside of that field affect us because it can affect us in a bad way. So it's a nice college atmosphere, but once that kickoff happens, we, we, we have to keep our focus. Let's start by talking about these uh, Bombers who have lost three in a row, but they got two big guns back in Milt Stiegel and their starting quarterback, Kevin Glenn. You look at the numbers, minus Stiegel and Glenn, and it's astounding. Not bad prior to 23 points a game, almost 280 yards passing, and then it just drops off the table when these two guys are out of the football game. This football team needs a boost of confidence. In my opinion, Jack, they're going to get it in Stiegel and Glenn. Why? Because they do make sound decisions. They'll keep the defense off the football field. And this is exactly what this football team needed right now. Well, I've been looking at those numbers, Matt, and I've been trying to figure out, I mean, how much of that is the absence of Stiegel and how much is the absence of Glenn? I mean, yeah, as a quarterback, you know what that's like to have a big weapon out of your lineup. I mean, is, is this a big deal that Stiegel's back, do you think? Well, I think it's a huge deal. I mean, because, you know, it does give confidence to everybody else in the Winnipeg Blue Bomber uniform. The East is entirely open. You look at the Alouettes, 7-4, and four, but they have lost their last four. Winnipeg, 5-5, five and five, Toronto, 5-5. Five and five. So what's going to determine these next two months, these next 60 days of CFL football, and who's going to win the East. In the school zone, so far today, this drive started at the road 25. Glenn to the end zone. Touchdown, Milt Stiegel, number 134. As he gets a little closer to the all-time CFL touchdown lead. Nine times out of ten, down in the goal line, you're going to see man defense. If you're going to see man defense, and it's not Eddie Davis, and this time it wasn't for Milt Stiegel, you know one thing, Kevin Glenn is going to look for number 85. A back-to-back -back completions against David Bush in the end zone for his second of the game. You knew it wouldn't be long. So it was 21-4. It's now 21-12. And the Bombers go back to work on offense. A minute 40 left in this first half. Big to Roberts. And it's Stiegel again. Up to the 42-yard line. The safety Clovis in on the tackle with Omar Morgan. First down Winnipeg. Well, for, for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers to get back on track, that's the guy that's going to do it for them. 
take over at their own 35 yard line first possession second half and Milt Stiegel lunging ahead for a first down at the 45. Good block by Val St. Germain to help Roberts get 11. And that pass for Milt Stiegel is caught but he'll be short of the first down. 39-12 is the final. Rough Riders have won three in a row. It's the four straight bomber loss. You know, we got to put this behind us. We'll watch the film. Unfortunately, we got to watch this film all week because this is the team we play next week. And we didn't play good team defense. We didn't play good as a team at all. I mean, we just, we suck. We suck when we went out there. The Bombers were one of only two teams in the league to practice without full equipment. But after the latest loss, players came to Barry concerned over the intensity level of practice. The pads were back on today as the frustrated group returned to practice with the Rough Riders still in their sights. We felt that we had to go out there and put some pads on, and, and hopefully uh, that'll make us play a whole lot better than what we've been playing in those games. Game comes Stiegel. He's a pressure player if there ever was one. And I think he spots an opportunity here. In motion he goes, tucking one away. Over the hedge a second. Can he make it three in no time? Does he have a fourth in him? It could be. Yes, touchdown. The Winnipeg Free Press. Train your brain. Blue Bombers is closing in on the CFL's all-time touchdown record, but he says he just wants a win for Winnipeg. Let's hope he can get back in there. Bombers have had some injury problems on the offensive line. Second and five. And Kevin Glenn with the pass and a completion at the 40-yard line. Well, you know that, that Kevin Glenn wants to get the chemistry set up early between he and Milt Stiegel, both coming back off injuries a week ago, and, and Kevin Glenn didn't get it to Stiegel as often as you'd know he'd like to. And, of course, on second down, that's when 85 is going to see the football. Second down, rush on, and Glenn finds Milt Stiegel for a first down across midfield into Saskatchewan territory. Some protection this time for Kevin Glenn. He gets a chance to back in there. Charles Roberts, a nice cut block so he can get that ball out and get Milt Stiegel. Milt Stiegel caught the first pass of the game from Kevin Glenn and then was kind of quiet after that. That's catch number two. Yeah, he usually does. Second in the league, second and nine. Stiegel. Glenn looking for Milt. Stiegel! Number 135. He's two away. I could tell by the way he came off the ball that Milt Stiegel was the primary target. He was an inside receiver and he took off. All Kevin Glenn needed was some time and the ability to get outside. If he got outside, he had a chance. Danny Barrett's thrown the challenge flag. He wants to make sure Stiegel got a foot down in the end zone. At the end line, let's take a look. First of all, Glenn has to get outside. He does that on Jereniak. Now, now he's going to throw it up and over the top. Now with Stiegel in bounds. Both hands on the ball. The left foot looked like right foot looked like it touched inbounds. You only need one. Yeah, did the right foot get down quick enough? Tough to tell from that angle. That first left. angle showed it pretty well. Clearly the left foot's out, but the right foot first to make contact. Here's another one. This might be even better. Well, that's hard to tell again when that right foot, but the right foot did touch first yes. when he had the football. And here's here's the best look. And from hold, this angle, it looks like hold the right it does get down. Hold it right now, guys. He's in. There you go. And it looks like that foot is in bounds. And he has control of the ball. Use that Montreal early in the year. Remember, Milt said he was too old for that play. <laughs> yeah, but he made a big gain on it. 20 yards. There he is. And a catch and a first down. 
into the Saskatchewan side of the field for the guy who's not too old to still get it done. Well, and once he runs that corner for a touchdown, now you know the defensive backs. Here he is right here in the middle of your screen. Now you know the defensive backs have got to respect that speed that he shows time in and time out, so they back off him a little bit. 12. Last Sunday in Regina, second and 10. And there's Stegall. He's open. Milt Stegall down to the five-yard line. David Bush saved the touchdown. He gets the one-on-one -on, -one on David Bush. And anytime it's one-on-one, -on -one, Glenn's looking for 85. 46 yards on the final play of the third quarter. Milt Stiegel going. He gets that touchdown in the corner, and then this is the catch. Look at the one-on-one -on, -one on David Bush. And Bush looks back to the corner. I see him peek back this way. Doesn't matter if you're beat by that much. Looking back at the quarterback just gets you the best ticket in the house. And actually 70 days since they won a game at home. Kevin Glenn goes to work. And there is Stiegel. Catch up to the 18-yard line. He'll be a yard short of the first down. The fans here are counting down. Two away from George Reed. Milk closing in on his fifth 100-yard game. Graham Bell, the Regina native, got the first down. And it is a 100-yard game for Milt Stiegel. And another first down up at the 34-yard line. You know, and, and Stiegel has done this a couple times in this game. And, and what I'm... What I mean by this, he's done this out. He's, he's come down and run the out a couple times. It'll go into the books as a 27-23 Blue Bomber win. Doug Berry wanted a recommitment to winning, and he got it here today in the Banjo Bowl. Did I have a say? No, why you say that, man? Because I was complaining a little bit? Nah. That's not my way, and I, I, I knew people would think that because I was complaining coming off the field, but it's more frustrating than the fact that we're not producing. It's not the fact that I'm not getting the ball. It's not my concern, and, and I always feel, you know, if you throw me the ball, I'm going to help the team, and everybody feels that way, but it wasn't complaining about, you know, me not getting the ball, the fact that we weren't producing, and, uh, you know, we came out in the second half, and I just happened to get some opportunities, but uh, I don't know if that worked, but it, if I, that's all it takes. I'll keep him playing all the time. Well, Mills Stiegel is closing in on CFL history and the career record of touchdowns of 137 shared by George Reed and Mike Pringle. Stiegel's third quarter touchdown that helped lift the Bombers to their victory over the Riders as he was able to get his toe down inbounds before going out of bounds at the back of the end zone. That's touchdown number 135. Three more and the record is his. By the way, Total Man credits a legendary song and dance man for helping him out on the play. Back in the day, I uh, took some tap dancing lessons with Sammy Davis Jr., and he said, when you get that opportunity, don't make me look bad, Milt. You know, I'm going to be watching from the heavens. So I just remember when I was up in the air, Sammy Davis. Sammy Davis. So I got the foot down, and uh, I want to give some, uh, some shout-out to Sammy Davis because he taught me a lot of things when I was younger. Where'd you meet him? <laughs> Where'd I meet him? I uh, met him back in Chicago back in 56, 57. You know, we were doing our thing in Chicago, uh, hanging out at the juke joint. And he said, Milton, I think you're going to need these tap dancing lessons. So I said, whatever, Sam. He said, take them. So I took them, and it paid off this evening. I'm cheap, but uh, oh, I'm a man of my word. I don't like him. I don't like you guys. I hate the media, but you know, if I say I'm going to do something, I'll do it. I hate that. You see that guy? That's the guy I hate the most. Get a, see that guy, Ned Flanders? I hate him. Hi, Lee Ho, neighbor. It's a hate-date relationship. <laughs> yeah, I'm being nice today. I usually charge for things like this. I usually don't let people take uh, steel shots or uh, whatever you may have of me free when I have on my clothes. But this is Shaw, so I'll make an exception today and let you see me. Uh, uh, there's actually something I would wear for GQ every now and then, but, uh, you know, it's something, a little something I wear on the road. A little something I picked out for the day. It's, it's nothing too extravagant, a little something. I don't want to show up to guys too much. It's usually when I wear something too nice, they, it makes them look pretty bad. So it's just a little something I picked out for the day. You know, we're right near in the middle now. We still control our own destiny. We're not counting on anybody else to help us out. So, you know, we're, we're, we're satisfied. Uh, we have to be satisfied. And we'll just, just keep working and, and see what happens. 
And Alan Pitts definitely had a great influence. I'm not going to sit here and say we were best friends, but when I first got to the league, uh, my way of thinking is I want to know who the best is because I want to I be like the best. And I got a VCR tape of him, and I, and I studied him, and I watched him, and I made sure I, every time after we played, I talked to him and asked him for advice, and, and he was very friendly with me and gave me a lot of advice. So uh, it, it would be great. You know, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say I don't want to break the record, but I'm not thinking about it. But uh, I always say Alan Pitts uh, is and, and was the greatest receiver ever playing the CFL. I have the utmost respect for Alan Pitts, who goes, as you mentioned, in the Hall of Fame this year. But I might go with Milt Stiegel, and, and I'll tell you why. I, I thought Alan Pitts in his career had great quarterbacks that he benefited from in Doug Flutie, Jeff Garcia, Dave Dickinson, Henry Burris. And that has not been the case for Milt Stiegel. He's had some good ones. Kahari Jones, one of them, in his prime. You know, he loves Kevin Glenn. He thinks he's a, he's a spitting image to Kahari Jones as far as his demeanor. But he had a bunch of bad ones as well and still did his thing. Three carries, no yards, and it's second and ten. And Kevin Glenn finds Milt Stiegel and a first down up at the 42-yard line. Well, he's got a ways to go to get that first touchdown tonight, but a great conversation with Milt Stiegel yesterday about when he came into the league and catching that first touchdown pass. Between best friends. Watch for that matchup later. Right now, back to Milt Stiegel. And Stiegel with a first down catch up to the Winnipeg 51-yard line. Cornelius Anthony and John Grace, the linebackers converging. You know, Milt Stiegel, when he talked about Alan Pitts, I, I asked him, what in particular were you watching with Alan Pitts and watching those tapes? And he said the one thing that he watched with Pitts more than anything is the way he used motion. Tonight at left tackle, the 10th different offensive lineman deployed by the Bombers this season. Second and 10, wide open, over the middle, Stiegel with a great spin move. Brought down, but a first down at the Calgary 34-yard line. Yeah, and Stiegel may have had some a lot more yards to run there had it not been the shoestring tackle from Wes Lysak. Stiegel right up here, and he's in that third receiver position, but a little change motion by he and Jamie Stoddard. Now he comes in, he's wide open, and how? The Calgary Stamp Peters could not get a man on catch in the second half. The first pass of the second half intended for him was picked Ooh, off. There you go. There's a catch and a first down at the 15. Well, it was only a matter of time. Well, even though he's double covered often, Kevin Glenn still can trust Milt Stiegel. And this time he's not. They're going to go with a, a zone blitz. They dropped Brian Clark, the Calgary Stamp Peters. And just the Stampeders continue their domination of the Blue Bombers here at McMahon Stadium. You know, they say, you know, anything good is they don't say anything. And I was a bad display of football, you know. Uh, I mean, they did a lot of good things, but we just did so many horrible things, you know, in all phases of the game. Uh, we, we pretty much stunk it up, you know. You got to give some credit to them. They did uh, make some plays, and we didn't we didn't make plays, you know. We couldn't stop them, and they stopped us. That's basically what, what it came down to, you know. And, uh, I learned to put it behind us, you know. We still got a ways to go, but we got to get it going real quick. We quit, right? We gave up, so that's what happens. You see the result right up on the scoreboard, man. 43 to nine when you uh, you give up on your on yourselves and all your teammates. So we got nothing to do but uh, accept we got what we deserve. Talking about me, so how can I say somebody quit? You know, I always try to give out, go out there and give 100 percent. But he's saying some guys quit; they must have quit. But me being a player, you know, I I can't judge and see if anybody else quit. Bombers still solidly in third place in the Eastern Division, just a couple of points behind the Argos and Alouettes. And if they can get their act together, they could challenge for a higher spot. As former CFLer Derek Armstrong has agreed to join the Blue and Gold. Apparently one of the reasons Armstrong has agreed to join the Bombers is that he's a huge Milt Stiegel fan. Armstrong was also a teammate of Kevin Glenn in Regina. So he you know, he had a little success in the NFL. I guess it's unfortunate that, you know, uh, they got rid of him. But uh, hopefully it's, a, it's fortunate for us because we need a spark, and, and I definitely think he can give us that spark. Winnipeg has lost five of their last six, and the Owls have now dropped five in a row. They're in a crucial situation, and we are also. They've lost five in a row, and I think we've lost five out of our last six. So, uh, 
It's going to be a crucial game for both of us, you know, and uh, you don't want to look beyond it, but then we have them again after that. So this first game is, is going to be really big, you know, to be in their place. Uh, Colty Matthews, I'm for sure he'll try to pull out some uh, some trick plays or add some different things to their, to their game plan, and we just have to go out there and execute, and and, and hopefully things come out, and, and, you know, for good for us. No, we're not hitting a panic button, but I think there, uh, hopefully there's a sense of urgency right now. You know, we, uh, I, I won't say we dug ourselves in a hole, uh, but, you know, we kind of got ourselves in the bind. But the good thing about it, we got a good chance to still win the East. Field goal as they couldn't punch it in. And Winnipeg get to Pater. Glenn to the goal line. And the official is not signaling. They are saying no, he's short. that he is short. Milt Stiegel denied number 136 by probably just a foot. Well, Mitt, Milt Stiegel right here goes down and then just works back to the outside. Bumps into the coverage. That's a heck of a catch. But there you see he is touched. He is down once again. It's Tim Strickland, the linebacker in coverage here. A good physical matchup. And that's a great call by second down and four yards. Glenn is throwing. Stiegel has the first down for Winnipeg. Well, Kevin Glenn has done a nice job reading the situations this afternoon in this first half and making some easy throws and some good completion. Play action to Roberts, Glenn over the middle, Stiegel, Milt Stiegel, is this 136? No, just before the two yard line. Milt Stiegel off to the races, another big gainer. So twice today, Milt Stiegel is denied a touchdown. And the play action really helps because Stiegel wants to work to the inside. Little juke right there, but that ties up the linebacker so you don't have to worry about putting loft on the football. And Glenn throws a nice strike, and then Stiegel takes care of the rest. What a great pass and run. And in fact, the entire Winnipeg receiving core has had some very good yards after the catch this afternoon. Good play action. Watch Stiegel trying to work back to the inside here. Watch the hole right here. Whoa, look at that. He has a point. Come on, guys. you got to call that stuff. Burned as momentum has in this game. See what the Bombers can do as they try to answer. Looking for Stiegel. Has it. Another first down. Uh, this is an interesting formation for Kevin Glenn. They go double tight ends, and just after Roberts has whacked off a great run, double tight ends, there it is, and then you go play action. Only three receivers in the pattern, and they go to Stiegel. Look at the play action there. Freezes everybody. Roll out good sight lines downfield. Love the call. Love the formation. You know what? The wind has changed. There's a piece of yeah, paper yeah. that's going in. It is that the Winnipeg Blue Bombers get revenge on the Alouettes, who have now lost six in a row. But the hitting, well, it's already started. Tensions running a little high at practice today. A small skirmish broke out between offensive lineman Avi Khan and defensive lineman Dante Booker. That is Mill Stiegel. Looking to get more camera time as if he needs it. Mill Stiegel has always stressed team success over personal achievement. And heading into this season, it was considered a foregone conclusion that Stiegel would break the all-time CFL touchdown record. But now, with just four games left and three more scores to go, it's suddenly 50-50. But as Global Sports' Joe Piscucci learned, getting Milt to talk touchdowns is about as difficult as trying to cover the Turtle Man. The Turtle Man has gone into his shell when it comes to the topic of the CFL career record for touchdowns. Not only is Stiegel not talking about it, so too is quarterback Kevin Glenn. When it's time for him to break the record, he'll break the record. So that's how I look at it. Well, that's not how Glenn looked at it just a few weeks ago. It's a situation where, I mean, you, as, a, as a player, I know Milt, he wants to accomplish it, you know, but he wants to win more than he does the, the, the record. But at the same time, you know, me being a quarterback and me, suppose I have to get him the ball, um, sometimes that, that goes through my mind as far as, you know, I want to help Milt get to this record, you know, at the same time produce wins. So um, it's always, especially now, it's always a, uh, an incentive to get him the ball because it's getting him closer to the record. 
With four games left, Stiegel needs just three more touchdowns to surpass both George Reed and Mike Pringle, who share the record at 137. I'll smile all you want me to, but that's all you're going to get out of me. That's, there's nothing to talk about. Nothing has happened. Winning is Stiegel won't allow the pursuit of a record to get in the way of the team and the ultimate goal of winning the Great Cup. However, with only four games left, there's no guarantee he'll get number 138. And until he does, there's the greater likelihood it will become a distraction. Yeah, everybody wants to see him do it. It's, he's, he's so deserving, and he's such a, a great guy in this league, and there's really nobody that epitomizes the league more than him. So I, I think the best thing for the, for the Blue Bombers would be that he ended up being one short, we win the Grey Cup, and then he comes back for another year. But... Well, here we are. 15 weeks down, five to go, and we find ourselves with a three-way dead heat for top spot in the East Division. Montreal, Winnipeg, and Toronto all tied with 14 points, but both Montreal and Toronto have a game in hand over the Bombers. Who do you like tonight? Man, I like Winnipeg. Who do you like? Ooh, I think Montreal's going to rebound oh, nicely. Oh, the former Alouette going with the Owls. Friday night football. Welcome to the greatest show, not on earth, but on field turf, baby. Guaranteed you'll be entertained tonight. Enjoy the game and stay tuned. And I holler. Lamont Brightful in for Daryl Crutchfield. Five for Roberts, second and five. This time the fake to Roberts. And the completion down the sidelines. It's Milt Stiegel. In coverage was the former bomber who refused to report here last year. Ricky Bell now in the Alouette secondary. Little play action to Milt Stiegel to get him involved early in the offense. You know, with the acquisition of Derek Armstrong, who had seven catches for 70 yards a week ago against Montreal. Terrific opening drive. Now, second down and goal from the five. And the ball into the corner. Incomplete. They were looking for Stiegel and flags fly on the play. Yeah. And Milts and a point it out to his old teammate Ricky Bell. Yeah, he certainly did. He was trying to run the quick out route. And when he went on his break, Ricky Bell grabbed his shoulder pads and Bell got some help from another teammate. But here he is. The quick out from Milt Stiegel. There's the grab right there. And you see Ricky Bell was just hanging on around his waist the whole way. Or that is a touchdown catch. And that may be the only way to contain Milt Stiegel when you get down in that part of the field. Quick out here. He's got left hand around the waist, right hand around the waist. Clearly pass interference. Just three for Roberts. He's second and 17. Here comes. here comes the pressure underneath. Crossing rope. And Stiegel Anwar tripped Stewart. up, and Anwar Stewart's having himself a game on both sides. Is he ever? I mean, Anwar Stewart, primary responsibility and job with his football team is to rush the quarterback. It's not to catch passes down the sideline, and it's not to make tackles in the open field on one of the all-time great receivers in CFL history, and yet throw to him to open things up. Second and six. Quick hitter, and a completion. There's Brett Stiegel with the catch and a first down in front of Tim Strickland. You see his quick hands, see Milt Stiegel's, how quick his hands were. That ball was thrown before Stiegel had turned around. I don't even know if Milt Stiegel saw this football. I mean, he come, look at, there it is. He turns out and watch how quick his hands are. His hands are quick back around, get him in position. Could have got credit for two. So Winnipeg starts their own 16, a little Dump pass there to Stiegel, who is punished by Davis Sanchez. The longest losing streak in the CFL this season is over as the Alouettes prevail 23-20. CFL record for touchdowns is safe for at least a little while. As mentioned yesterday, Milt Stiegel suffered a strained knee after this hit by Montreal defensive back Davis Sanchez in the fourth quarter of the Bombers' 23-20 loss to the Owls Friday night. Bomber head coach Doug Berry is waiting for Stiegel to be evaluated on Monday to find out how long his top receiver will be out. It was a legal, legal contact. I know it's legal. Do you like it? <laughs> it's, that's all. I mean, everybody would rather get hit high, you know, and uh, Milt was hit from uh, the, more towards the backside and, and low. And uh, but it, it can't complain about it. I mean, it's football, and and it's all within the rules. Well, the news on Milt Stiegel isn't good, but it isn't all that bad. At least that is the latest I get from the head coach. Stiegel was injured in the fourth quarter of Friday's game against the Alouettes. 
When tackled at the knees by Davis Sanchez, Deagle described the hit as dirty, and it's not the first time that Sanchez has laid out a cheap shot on Stiegel. Mills Stiegel has seen enough of Davis Sanchez. A year ago when Sanchez was with Edmonton, Stiegel was crunched and suffered the first concussion of his career. Friday night's submarine hit has bruised Stiegel's MCL, and he will miss at least one game. When a guy has his back to you, and you know you've got him lined up, and you can take him any way you want, and you go right down low and you take out his knee, totally defenseless. Uh, to a guy who's one of the superstars in this league, I, I think it was a, a terribly cheap shot. I mean, there's, there's no question it was a cheap shot. He didn't have to do it. But I say, you know, a lot of defensive players, they really don't care. Blue Bomber fans have gotten used to his antics over the years, so really, this shouldn't surprise anybody. Charles Roberts may be getting bored over the bye week, or maybe it was just somebody joking around on his computer. But somebody posted a message on a Bomber fan website using his chat handle saying this will be his final season in the CFL. This statement was left under Robert's chat handle. I would like to take this opportunity to inform everyone that at the end of the season, I will be retiring from football. It has been a great six years, and I appreciate all of your support. Now, Roberts has a history of making interesting comments, and if this was indeed Charles' feelings, they could easily change as they have in the past. The Bombers get back to practice on Tuesday, and Roberts will surely be front and center. Now, Roberts hasn't always been the easiest to interview, but that only adds to the fun and games for us in the media. Now, there was a game being played after practice today as Roberts tried to avoid the media over suggested retirement plans posted on a fan website. Russ Hobson was our man charged with trying to tackle Roberts on this subject. Roberts again, right side. We all knew Charles Roberts was elusive on the football field. And with that run, he has regained the CFL rushing lead. But today, Roberts proved to be just as elusive off the field, attempting to dodge questions from the media about his supposed retirement at year's end. How do you say this? I don't know how I got on there. There's no retirement, man. Are you saying Those you... weren't your words? No retirement. Walking off the field, Roberts clearly denies posting the message on rbombers.com and says he has no plans of retiring anytime soon. But Roberts admitted to his head coach that he did indeed post the message, telling Barry he was just trying to get a rise out of fans and the media. Charles wanted to have some fun. He was just uh, doing it all in a, in a light attitude. Uh, he knew he'd uh, provoke some attention from not only, I guess, the people on the media site, on the uh, website, but also from you guys, the media. So it, it was done in, uh, when, in, in good fun. He certainly has no intentions of retiring, none. Now, Barry wouldn't go as far to say the whole thing is a distraction for his club. In fact, in some aspects, he says it's actually brought the team closer together. Everybody was poking fun at him, and, uh, and Charles had to take it. Of course, this is certainly not the first time Blink has been the center of attention for his zany comments. Roberts has had a checkered history since joining the Blue and Gold in 2001. There's been trade demands, missed flights, going AWOL, and retirement threats in the past. And general manager Brendan Tamman chalks this up as just another case of Charlie being Charlie. Nothing surprises me with him. I mean that. It's, it's Charlie's Charlie. He does whatever he's going to do. And he might change his mind tomorrow. He might say he's going to play for another 10 years. I don't get too worked up about it, though. Stamps. Mill will be doubtful. Uh, we started him with a little bit of cutting today. We'll see how it works. But he's, his knee is feeling really good. And, uh, but he hasn't stressed it at all. So, And we're in no hurry to, of course, rush him back. We'll see how he responds today, tomorrow. And I think if he were to feel great after tomorrow, then maybe it might be something we'd consider uh, putting him on for this week. But right now, I'm, I'm doubtful. I don't know if this is a good or bad thing, but it's not that cold to me out there. And I wasn't really doing that much moving around, so I think I've been in Winnipeg too long. I'm saying that this is not cold, fellas. You're going you're gonna to wish it was just warm soon. Well, Stiegel will not make the trip to the Steel City, still suffering from a strained MCL in his right knee. Originally, it was thought the Turtle Man would miss two to five weeks of action, but it now looks as though he'll be ready for their meeting with the Stampeders, which would be exactly three weeks after he first suffered the injury. 
Man, I told you, Milt Stiegel is not the normal human, man. I'm, I'm special, man, and not, uh, I'm humble, but I'm, I'm special, man. Stiegels were built different. My mother and father are a, a different breed, and, we, and they produced their kids, me being the fifth one, me and the be, being the best one, uh, just a different breed. But uh, I've, I've done my MCLs before, and I knew exactly what it was when I got hit. The trainers, they didn't even have to check it out. Of course, they looked at it and, and made sure what it was, but I knew exactly what it was. I've done my uh, MCLs before, so uh I mean, unfortunately, it's just part of the game, so uh, I should definitely be ready to go next week. Coach, what positives uh, besides, obviously, a lead do you take into the half? None. What, what frustrates you the most, obviously, after this? Oh, everything. Penalties, uh, you name it. I'm not satisfied one bit. The offense was, seemed to be moving at a nice start, obviously, at the early going, but seemed to sputter down the stretch. Why was that? I don't know. Thanks very much, Coach. Well, so the Bombers won't get a perfect six for style points, but a win is a win, and head coach Doug Barry isn't about to give the two points back to the Tiger Cats. Yes, the Bombers were far from their best Sunday, but when they needed to step it up, they did, both offensively and defensively, and that is a good sign for a team heading into the playoffs for the first time in three years. For the first time in almost three weeks, Milt Stiegel took full part in practice and fully intends to play against the Stamps on Saturday night. Stiegel will wear a brace on his sore right knee, but the Turtle Man doesn't think it'll slow him down any. He's worn a similar brace in the past during the course of his career. I wore a knee brace in 1996, 1998, 2000, and 2001. So it's just, it's just part of the plan. Actually, when I took it off after 2001, I felt uncomfortable. So now the knee brace doesn't bother me. I'm having a knee brace on, some rib pads, uh, my diapers because my bladder been acting up. Uh, what else? You know, with everything, man. I'm, I'm ready for anything. You're going to be well protected, man. Well protected, man. I'm ready to go, man. So they can hit me. The only place they can't hit me is uh, hit me in my fingers. I'll probably get hurt. But besides that, hit me anywhere else, they're going to get hurt. So I'm, I'm ready. Uh, Milt Stiegel's endless contributions to local charities have also been recognized. Milt is this year's recipient of the Cal Murphy Heart of a Legend Award for his outstanding sportsmanship and dedication to both the league and the community. Stiegel is also the team's nominee for the prestigious Tom Pate Memorial Award, which is presented annually by the CFL. Definite help to the cause will be the return of Milt Stiegel to the lineup after missing a lone game against Hamilton last week due to injury. The Bombers receiving core will be back to full strength. Saying we have all this talent doesn't mean anything. We actually have to go on the field and do something with it. And, uh, you know, we displayed it at times and other times we have. We've been very inconsistent. But uh, as long as we remain consistent, especially offensively, uh, when we don't have turnovers, we have a very good chance of winning because our defense, uh, they, they, they play pretty well when we don't put them in bad positions. So uh, we just want to remain consistent. So it's going to be a tough task for us. But uh, we got some momentum from that last week's game. And we just want to continue on with this one and hopefully with the BC game and going to the playoffs with some momentum. Two and at the Dome to take on the Argos tonight who could clinch the East title with a win, but second quarter, Kerry Joseph finds CIS legend Andy Fantuz for the major. Riders hold on to win 13-9 to in a very boring game. Thank you, Green Monsters, though. Bombers can now still earn a home playoff date with a win and a Montreal loss. The Stiegel Network is back at it. Love. Welcome to a Saturday night doubleheader where the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are going to play their final home game of this regular season. And they've got their star receiver back in the lineup. Milt Stiegel just three touchdowns away from setting the CFL's all-time touchdown record. If Winnipeg uh, wins out, wins tonight, and wins at BC next week, and Montreal loses in Toronto, Montreal finishes third. Fumble, and now the Burris interception. Bombers set up at the Calgary 49. Play action. And there's a completion, and Milt Stiegel has his first catch of the night tossed down at the 30-yard line. And Milt Stiegel just said something again to the officials about this one as he breaks on the out. And again, the play action to Charles Roberts. Stiegel is open. And right after that catch, he gets up and he said something to the official. He did not have a rushing yard in the third quarter last week in Hamilton. Kevin Glenn to the end zone. Touchdown, 136. Milts one away. Historic night here at Canada Stadium. Don't go away. It feels like it's warming up right now in the stadium. 
Milt Stiegel on the out. He gets some help from Kevin Glenn, who turns his shoulders the opposite direction. He, that's where Milt Stiegel will start right there. And here's his pattern. He comes down, inside fake, and then bang outside. Perfectly executed pass rope by Milt Stiegel, and you expect nothing less. Look at that. Bang back out. Twirl the hips around. Touchdown, Milt Stiegel, 136. And look how Kevin Glenn has his shoulders facing the right side of the formation and then whips him around, knowing. Right there, Brian Clark for the Calgary Stampeders with Kobe Reinhardt, a close second. Second and 10, maybe 10 and a half. And there's a catch over the middle. Another first down. Milt Stiegel's inside the 10 yard line, and they're back in scoring position. You know, he, he does it physically but he also does it mentally and this is watching film this is game film and, and game planning because he's just going to sit down he sees the second window the first window is on the right side of Brian an impressive second half Doug Berry's offense hitting on all cylinders we won the game man it helped us win the game that's the main thing is help us win the game can I put on that pink hat when I'm doing my interview let me see this hat. this really brings out my uh, blue eyes <laughs> So yeah, the touchdown helped us win the game. Uh, hey, I, I, mean, I know y'all saying it's, it's getting closer to the record, and that's all fine and dandy. Next, but Bill? the main thing was the fact that uh, we won the game. I still think my pink hat looks better on you. There's, there's like, there's only my father is dead. There's only one person on this earth who can look as good as me in clothes, and that's my son. That's it. Nobody else. I'm sorry. I, I could put on a pink, triple-breasted pinstripe suit with some purple platform shoes and some blue contacts and I'm still gonna look good. And I, I'm not conceited, I'm just honest. I'm, there's three things I learned to be in life. My father taught me the three H's. Humble, hungry, and honest. Humble you are not. Yes, I am, but I'm honest. The, the two go together. Humble and I didn't volunteer. You asked me the information, and I told you. The first time you volunteered it. No, I didn't. Oh, you yes, were you looking did. at me like he thinks he looks good. That's saying you thought, you thought I looked good. I'm, I'm just honest. That's all it is. The Bombers received some help. Toronto and Montreal both lost their outings and will face each other next week to decide first in the East. Meaning, if Winnipeg can close out their season with a victory over BC next week, they will clinch second and host the East semifinal. Milt Stiegel playing his first game since being cut at the knees by Davis Sanchez. Stiegel went low to take out Coe, so Reginbald can pick up a few more yards as well. Okay, Milt Stiegel's 5'11", 6 feet, 180 pounds. Scott Coe is 6'2", 250. You put the man. If I was running at you, would you cut me? And I apologize to him afterwards. But if I, I got the, I can't hit the man up high. Every time I hit somebody up high, I get hurt, man. So I, you know, I gently just, you know, I, I didn't truly. It, it wasn't a David Sanchez cut. It was a Milt Stiegel cut. It head coach Doug Berry says Milt will be given every opportunity to get his hands on the football against the BC Lions this weekend even if it means handing the ball off to number 85 at the one-yard line. For Barry, there's a good reason why he wants Stiegel to get that record this Saturday night. Every week, we have something planned for Milt, a play. We always do. And we'll do, carry a play for him again this week. But you just can't structure a whole offense to say, well, we'll go to this one guy, and we, it'll never get done that way. Well, I'd love to see Milt get it. I, I've mentioned to somebody that I think it would be great if he got the record this year, and I, I'm not sure Milt's ready to retire, but if he is, then he'll have the record, and if he's not, then he's gonna, he'd be coming back here solely because he loves playing football, and the record would have nothing to do with that decision. a legend was born. Milt Stiegel, his first touchdown. Since that day, Milt Stiegel has electrified stadiums throughout the CFL. Now, 12 years later, he stands on the doorstep of history. To the end zone, touchdown, 136. Milt's one away. Will Mission 137 happen tonight? It's the Blue Bombers and the Lions next. He's the model that all receivers should try to live by in the CFL. He's, you know... He's he's done it quietly, like like um, like like none other. Um, you know, he and he does everything with class. Um, I look up to him because I think he's you know I think he's a great football player one, and then I think he's a better person off the field. So um, I would like to see him get the record, but um, maybe next year. <laughs>
Well, it's a big mark. Milt Stegall's been chasing for a while. He's sitting at 136 career touchdowns. The record is 137. The spotlight is on him tonight. Here's how Kevin Glenn got hurt. First of all, this is a late hit and should have been a flag, but that's beside the point. You can see the, the left ankle of Kevin Glenn buckling right there, and, and this is an injury that I know uh, all of us have had, and I tell you, this is not an easy injury to come back from, and let's hope that he recovers from this, but you know what? This is a nightmare for the Bombers, who are hosting the Grey Cup, and I believe with that play, they may have just seen their Grey Cup aspirations poof. Boys for the Lions on the year, including 34 interceptions. Dinwiddie has Milt Stiegel, first catch. Makes a bit of an enigma when he was in Ottawa a couple of years ago. I think a lot of people felt he was a potential great quarterback here. Stiegel on the end around. We haven't seen that, I don't think, since very early. Maybe the first week of the year in Montreal, at well, least early in the season. Yeah, and if, if the Winnipeg Blue Bombers can get it down in, in the red zone, get it down inside the 10-yard line, maybe we'll see that type of play to Milt Stiegel to get him the football and get him one of those. Just said, hey, I've been taken out of that starting lineup at, on defense kind of mailed it in and he never did that big short drop here's Stiegel with a catch and lunging ahead to the 20 and close to a first down but now the Glenn injury clouds all that and Wally Buono's team I think we could safely say are the favorites as we head to the 2006 postseason. Milt Stiegel's quest to become the CFL's all-time leader in touchdowns will have to wait another season. It was one of number 85's quietest games of 2006 with only 31 total yards and most importantly, no success in the end zone. We just self-destructed and we can't, you know, blame one person or one situation. Uh, we all took our turns in, uh, in this disaster of a football game we played today. Will Argo fan support heighten for Sunday's Eastern semifinal at Rogers Center against Winnipeg? Blue Bombers wide receiver Milt Stiegel doesn't appear to think so, calling out Argo fans in Winnipeg newspapers Monday by saying, quote, I won't say Toronto is a hostile environment because a lot of those people don't even know what the CFL is, end quote. Though clearly amused, the Argos fired back. I mean, all I know, we get around 30-something thousand in our stadium uh, this past game, and so... You know, obviously we have more fans than they do. No, I don't care to me leave a message for Milt. I will, I will carry on his message to our fans. Uh, out in Winnipeg, Milt Stiegel, great, great receiver, says that we don't know anything about the CFL here. Well, you know, we, we are the oldest pro football franchise, and let's come on out and show them how we support people and what we do in our city. I practice. That is good news. That's always good news when you go out and practice. So if I would have sat out, then you would it would have probably not been good news. But I practice today, so... Um, and I uh, took, you know, limited reps, and like I said, I went 70, 75 percent on it. So um, tomorrow we'll increase that and see where we go from there. I saw him doing some stuff, you know, before today's practice, so I knew he was going to be fine. Uh, the way he was, uh, his attitude around here, and just the way he was carrying himself, I knew he was going to be uh, ready to go. And you would basically have to chop his leg off for him to not play in this game. The mood in Bomberville is upbeat, and the players are having fun. Quarters, get yourself together, do your research, watch the game, and you'll know what's going on. You won't have to ask Kevin. Charles is definitely the key because we're going to try to run the ball. Their thing is, okay, you may get a bunch of yards on us, but we're not going to let you score. But if Charles is continually running the ball and, and, and getting big chunks of yards uh, every time he touches the ball, that's going to open it up for us, and that's when we can create some big plays. News just keeps getting better on the injury front for the Blue Bombers. The team practiced indoors today under the golf dome, and both quarterback Kevin Glenn and defensive lineman Doug Brown appear to be good to go for Sunday in Toronto. The playoff game, all that regular season stuff is, is thrown out the window now. It's all about uh, 60 minutes on Sunday. You know, like I said, this is one game. You get one opportunity if you want to continue playing that next week. Uh, so we'll just go out there and see what we can do. This is the time to really step it in. Like I say, the, the regular season is behind us now, and, and this is the true test. You know, uh, you can go 18 and 0. If you don't do anything in the playoff, nobody will remember what you've done in the regular season. So uh, we're just going to try to go out there, and, and, and hopefully everybody's motivated and ready to go because uh, we're going to need everything we, uh, we, we can come up with if we want to win this game. In the East, the war of words between the Argonauts and Blue Bombers just isn't going away. The Canadian version of Ocho Cinco, Winnipeg wideout Milt Siegel, continues to rag on the city of Toronto and its fans. Now, while it's mostly good-natured ribbing, the Argos would beg to differ. 
Toronto wants to be the Hollywood of Canada. The CFL is a great league, but you're dealing with, with fans, or I won't say fans here because they don't come out, you're dealing with people here who want so much more. They're not uh, uh, respecting or, or concerned about the great product that they have here with the CFL. All right, guys, here we go. First question, Sean Millington, you're up first. M Milt Stiegel, one of the CFL's great quotes, took two runs at Toronto fans this week. Is Milt Stiegel right in what he said about them? Well, it, Milt kind of was disparaging about the Toronto fans, and I don't think he's referring to the fans who actually show up for the games, which Coach Clemens referred to, the 30,000 who come on average. Yeah, those guys are great. It's the rest of the people in the city, with the largest per capita area in Canada, who are not supporting the Argonauts. Greg. Well, I agree. I think it's deliberate on Mill Stiegel's part. Great PR because I hope that it got everybody upset in Toronto so that they flood to the stands and be able to get more than 30,000 people. They've done a great job over the last two years at getting more people into that stadium, and hopefully that continues to grow. Kahari. Yeah, I think he's right in saying it. 8 million people. 30,000, 600,000 people in Winnipeg, they get 25,000 people. Uh, the numbers don't add up. Toronto should be averaging more people coming to their games. Uh, clearly, Kahari does not work for the Census Department. Eight million, a little high for the Toronto uh, area. No, come yeah, on. I think it's a little bit high. All right. Well, since I was so eager to get started on these before, <laughs> I might as well get going now. And I'm gonna say to Toronto Argonauts, just because I believe the health of Kevin Glenn is a substantial issue, and I believe that the Bombers are going to be significantly weakened by his inability to perform, and this, that's going to play into the Argos' defensive game plan. Well, I think that Glenn is going to be healthy enough because against this Toronto defense and the style that they play, he's going to be handing the ball off, a lot of run to Charles Roberts, short passing attack, and they don't really have a pressure style of defensive front. They have fewest number of sacks in the CFL being the Toronto Argonauts, so he's healthy enough in my opinion. I'm going to go with Winnipeg also. I just feel like Winnipeg is in a better position to score points right now. Toronto has had trouble scoring points, and that concerns me, especially with a guy like Tony Miles out of the lineup. I feel like they're going to be relying a whole lot on Arlen Bruce, and I just don't think that's going to get it done. All right, Kahari, my pick is with Sean. I'm going with the red hot hand. I'm going to take Toronto, and, and the reason is it's just that, you know, Kevin Glenn, I just have seen enough injuries and conspiracy theorists that I wonder in the playoffs if they're not hiding how serious this really is, and I'd be just surprised if he made it through the entire game unscathed. We First and 10, Blue Bombers from row 39. Good play action. Buys Glenn some time. Has a man open. It's complete. Stiegel! He's gone! Stiegel looking for that extra gear, and he shut down a bounds at the 11 yard. You know, we talked about this before the game also, that they're going to depend on Roberts, right? He's going to do the bulk of the work, but that one or two or three plays from your receiving core, you're going to need to make them. And here it is. Who else but Milt Stiegel with a 60-yard reception, doing it off the scramble, just getting open, working against Orlando Steinhauer. Boy, when he's in the open like this, you just, I naturally think he's gone, but had the angle and they forced him out of bounds. Huge play by Kevin. 11. From there, Glenn back to Roberts. He finds a line and he is in the end zone. It's an 11-yard score. Gives the Bombers a 2014 lead. Final quarter, Noel Prefontaine adds a boot. Argos down by three. Bombers to the air. Glenn going deep and it's Derek Armstrong who comes up with a sensational snag. 47-yard reception. Unreal. Glenn gets some confidence in his air attack from that and he does it again. Going this time though for the zone. Chris Brazel comes out with it. Touchdown Bombers 27-17 off the 27-yard strike. Argos running out of time. Pinball Clemens makes a switch of pivot. Michael Bishop coming in. This is a pretty big gamble by Pinball. We're going to see if it pays off right here. Bishop, wide open. Guns it. Arlan Bruce still on his feet. It's a foot race, and Bruce is going to go the distance. The Argos are just three back. The Bombers with less than eight minutes left. Glenn goes back to Roberts in the run game. Roberts breaks through, but he is stripped of the football by Chuck Winters. Argos recover the first fumble of the game. They get the ball, and Bishop launches one to R.J. Soward in the back of the end zone. He goes up and comes down with a score. Argos regain the lead, 31-27. Bishop... Just outside the 30-yard line. Empty backfield. Glenn. Intercepted Argos! 
And, and you have to feel sorry as for that man, yeah. Milton Stegall. He had a big catch in the final drive. He had the 60 yarder in the third quarter. But I think that, I mean, if he was that receiver, the, the closest one to the quarterback where it was Robertson, where it was Brazel, if that was Milt Stegall, you would have seen him go down the middle of the field, recognize no free safety, and take advantage of it. But instead, you had a running back, Roberts, there, who doesn't recognize that coverage and just did the quick slant. They'll run out the clock using 20 seconds both times. It's been a good one. Very entertaining. Been a great football game. Both teams have Alouettes in the Scotiabank East Final next Sunday at the Olympic Stadium in Montreal. A very entertaining football game in front of a very noisy crowd here at the Rogers Center this afternoon to see the Argos beat the Bombers 31 to 27. We, we got the momentum back. We made some plays, and you got to give them some credit. They got some playmakers, and, and that's what they did. But uh, we had opportunities. Uh, did the better team win? I, you know, who's to say? You know, but uh, we had our opportunities. We got the momentum back our way, and then we let them uh, get the momentum back their way. And immediately after the loss, questions surrounding Milt Stiegel and his future in Winnipeg and the CFL start to swirl. So well, no, no, it, it's too early. You know, uh, me and my wife are gonna go home and have a lengthy discussion and it may not be a day it may be weeks but uh you know I'll definitely let Winnipeg uh, give them some uh gr great notice so they know what's going on with me so they know what direction to go after that but uh it's hard to make a decision right now you know it's just uh, the the way we lost today and just the lost period uh that's what's weighing on me right now <laughs> this may be the last time the Milt Stiegel will have fun with the media well, Milt Stiegel made just two catches yesterday and was wide open when uh, Kevin Glenn decided to force the ball to Roberts. So now begins the biggest question the Bomber fans and really CFL fans want answered, and that is, has one of the greatest receivers in CFL history played his final game? Stiegel's locker stall was already cleaned out when the media was allowed into the dressing room today. Stiegel has dropped hints through the season that this would be his final tour of duty. He fell short of the all-time touchdown record by one, by two, if he was going to break it. But winning the Grey Cup has always been his first and primary goal. Will the Turtle Man retire, or will he come back to break the record and get one last shot at a Grey Cup ring that has eluded him in his 12 years with the Bombers? Siegel says that decision has been made. We need to know. Should I call you first? I think so. What's your number again? Sure. Okay, yeah. No, the people who need to know, I've, 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 uh, I've expressed to them, and, and we've talked, so uh, they know everything that's going on. Oh, you know, I don't, I, I could have a hunch, but it doesn't matter. It's, uh, it's, I know what he's going through. I know he's got to go home, to talk with his wife. I, but I, I look at Milt and the condition that he's in, the shape he's in, is the, uh, the performance that he gives, and. I look at an NFL receiver, Jerry Rice, who played into his 40s, and, uh, you know, there's no reason why Milk certainly in the shape that he's in and the contributions that he makes. Uh, uh, I don't understand why he shouldn't be able to make the same contributions in another year. Man, I got 50 years, but that, that's not what the determining factor if I'm going to play again. We'll have to wait and see. I'll have to wait and see just like the rest of you guys. I probably know before you, but that's just how it's going to happen. There's 10 million things more important than playing football, believe me. So if this is it, this is where I go out. It, it's no big deal. It's going to be all right, believe me. I woke up this morning. Uh, hopefully I wake up tomorrow morning. My family's happy and healthy, so that, that's the main concern. All I do is play football. I'm not saving lives or, or changing the world. I play football. Ladies and gentlemen, our next presenters represent the pride of the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. One was a quarterback who was the CFL's outstanding player in 2001. He will work the game with CBC on Sunday afternoon. The other, the other is quite simply one of the greatest receivers of all time. He was the CFL's outstanding player in 2002. He is currently one touchdown away from the all-time record. Please welcome Kahari Jones and Milt Stiegel.
This was the scene at halftime of beaming Kahari Jones with Milt Stiegel as they were honored at the half as the greatest quarterbacking and receiver connection of all time. Making the connection, Stiegel and Kahari Jones earning 27% of the votes to finish first. And uh, hopefully you guys have a good game and good luck to you, Richard. Come back, Milk. Come back. Come back, Milk. <laughs> Coming up in just a moment, we're going to show you the greatest touchdown celebrations of this past season in the CFL. With all the choreography going on with these touchdown celebrations, are they getting better over time? I think there's too much uh, choreography going on. There's too much thinking. Back when I was doing it, when I was the, the Danny Terrio of it, we thought of it five <laughs> minutes before the game. But now guys are doing it weeks in advance. It's like right now, it's a spur of the moment. Those are the best dances. <laughs> you know, he started it, and now he's complaining about it. <laughs> I take it for granted. They look at it like, well, you know, this is an eight-league team. I can get back here some other time. Let's go out and have some fun. But you have to understand, it's hard to get to the Great Cup. And when you get there, you better cherish it and take every moment like it's your last. And I think they're doing it this year. In 2004, I don't know if anybody knows it, but on the way to the game, they were actually having a scuffle on the bus. So there was a lot of distractions going on. Now those guys are focused, and I think it's going to be a different uh, outcome this game. Hey, that, that brings a whole new meaning to the word distraction. You <laughs> for a championship game, the guys are fighting on the bus? Yeah, yeah. There was actually a little scuffle on the bus. No needs need to be said. I don't even think those guys are on the team now, but there was a scuffle on the bus before the game, wow. and that made a, had some difference to do in the outcome of that game that year. Well, in the midst of a Hall of Fame career, all the accomplishments you have, can it possibly be taken away from you given the fact that you haven't won a title? Well, personally, of course, you want to win that title. All the success you can have uh, personally is nothing if you don't have that Grey Cup title. Of course, you want to think to yourself, well, I've played well, I've done all I can do. It's a team sport. But you want to have that title. And I think it's kind of a letdown if you don't get that title. Yeah. We're in a place very familiar to you, the end zone at Canada Inn Stadium. You've been here a few times. I've been here a few times, uh, 135 total. Not all of those 135 have been here, but this is a place where I definitely feel comfortable, so I have no problems being here. Well, if some of your check is cut in half because you broke the Grey Cup, uh, <laughs> don't be mad. You tried to blame it on Carl Kidd, and he's standing here right now, so we know the truth. There's an old grumpy man standing behind you right now. I know him very well. Boy, that's just myth. I want to ask Mr. Marsh a question, but Kid is taking up all the space. Get out the interview. It's over. So Thanks, Carl. Appreciate it. <laughs> Me personally, knowing that your coaching style is from the New Rockney era, how, how did you get these young guys, and when did it happen to buy into your coaching style? Because I know how difficult you can be at times, coach. We'll come back yeah, with more from Winnipeg right Love after this. You, buddy. Coach Richard giving 10 minute answers, man. You've been complaining all week that it, it wasn't cold enough. Is it finally cold enough for you? Uh, this was some good fall weather. You know, I went to the beach and I still saw some people hanging out at the beach, so it still wasn't cold enough. But, I mean, you can't beat this. No wind, uh, nice and balmy in Winnipeg. Th this is fall weather for Winnipeg. These folks weren't expecting it for it to be this warm. At what point will you make the decision? Well, actually, my wife just text messaged me and she actually said, that's what she's, or the audio must have went out or something. I don't, I don't know. But no, we'll, we'll make a decision in the next two or three weeks. That's what we plan on doing. We're going to sit down and talk about it and weigh our pros and cons. And, you know, if it's up to me, I'm back. But my priority is in order. My family is 10, time, 10 million more times more important than football. So we're going we're gonna to see what happens. Listen, this has been fun. A lot of fun this past week. We appreciate your insight and the fact that uh, you're able to hang around with us uh, and, and, and deal with us all week and be so nice to us. If I'm playing next year, I will not be working on the score. That, that, that's it. I'm, I'm not doing it again. I, I will be in the Grey Cup or, or I'm hanging myself. That's well, it. <laughs> this year we came to your home for the Grey Cup. Next year you're coming to our home and hopefully you'll be playing in the Grey Cup. That sounds like a plan. There Still no word from Milt Stiegel on whether or not he'll come back for one more season. When Stiegel first left town after the Bombers were eliminated, he said the people who need to know would find out in due course. But Stiegel, just one touchdown shy of the all-time league record, has remained quiet on the subject and still hasn't told General Manager Brendan Tammen one way or the other. But after speaking with Tammen, you get the feeling that Stiegel wants to come back, that is, if his wife will let him. I talked to Milt uh, several times last week during Great Cup Week amongst my meetings with everybody else, and quite honestly, it could go either way. You know, I, I don't have any indication that he will or he won't. I do have an indication that he wants to, but that doesn't mean he will. And uh, it's touch and go. I really believe it's, it's not a lock that he's coming back.
fans and uh, the Blue Bombers and those of the CFL waiting word from Milt Stiegel whether he will heed their call and give us all one more year. The man himself is back home in Atlanta, still apparently discussing his return with his family. His two-year-old son Chase told Doug Brown no way when asked whether dad was going to play football next year. The decision, I suspect, will be announced next week. For now, here's what head coach Doug Barry thinks. I had a conversation with Milt and I... I just told him, I said, Milt, I'm not going to twist your arm. You know what's best for you and your family and as you talk with your wife. And, but I understand that I believe that you still have game left. And if, if you do decide to come back, it's because we want you back and to feel that you can make a significant contribution. And Milt would say, well, you know, Coach, with what I get paid, you could go out and, and get three more receivers for what I get paid. And I said, well, you give me the uh, 12, 1,500 yards of production, and I have those three receivers, Milt. So I don't know what he's going to do. But it, we would miss, certainly miss him. But uh, in terms of significant setback, I think that initially there'd be some. But it all depends on uh, who takes his spot. Milt, what a way! Brandon Tamman is still awaiting Milt Stiegel's decision as to whether or not he'll be back for one more go with the blue and gold. It was expected by one of his teammates that Milt was to make up his mind this week. But the waiting game continues as the Stiegel family decides if the Turtle Man will return north for a 13th season. Stiegel has played all 12 of his CFL seasons with the blue and gold, but... Has someone hinted over the last two years that he might want to retire considering the fact that he wants to be around when his son grows up? The 36-year-old, soon to be 37-year-old on January 25th, hasn't showed any signs of slowing down. He's gotten better. The Turtle Man hauled in 79 catches for 1,269 yards while scoring seven touchdowns. And considering that he's only one shy of tying the all-time CFL mark and two from breaking it, I'm going to go out on a limb and say that Milt will come back for one more go and a chance to get his name on that Grey Cup, which has eluded him all these years. Time will tell. <laughs> so, Nelly, I would expect a decision on Milt Stiegel's future to come back maybe next week, if mm -hmm. not uh, before Christmas, for sure. Mm -hmm. And let's hope, cross our fingers, like I said, I'm going to say Milt's back for one more go at it. Welcome back. Well, now's our opportunity. We ought to put all these rumors and polls and everything to rest. What 89% of our call-in listeners all thought that Milt Stiegel would come back, and who better to ask these questions than the man himself, Milt Stiegel, one touchdown away from tying the all-time touchdown record in the CFL. Welcome to the show, Milton. Thank you. Hey, before we get started, I'm yeah. only talking to Wheeler. I refuse to talk to you, White Jack. <laughs> started, so. only, only Wheeler can ask me questions. Based right. on what? Why, why am I getting the cold shoulder here, man? You've been getting the cold shoulder since 2001. That's when I first <laughs> well, Mel, I already right? discussed. So, I already told you earlier when I talked to you today, I want to talk to Darlene. We want an authoritative well, voice well, on the subject for you. Darlene is changing Chase's diaper because he doesn't he don't want to get potty trained, but, so she's up there changing his diaper as he watches his favorite quick character. Uh, Lightning <laughs> but, Milt, no, we know Darlene is the one that's really making the decision on this on this career move for Do you. you want to talk, Darlene? Hold on, she'll talk. Hold okay, on. Okay, okay. Hello, please, Darlene. Please. Darlene, <laughs> please. Darlene <laughs> let him come back, up. please. <laughs> What'd you say? Dar Darlene, oh, yeah. how you doing? You're on the spin zone with Doug Brown and Dave Wheeler. How are you, Darlene? Good, guys. How are you? Good. Now, we, w we were going to talk to Milt tonight, but really it's a waste of our time because we know that when it comes to making family decisions that you're the one we really need to talk to. <laughs> you're really the authoritative voice of the Stiegel household, are you not? Um, I would say that's correct yeah, the, in most instances. That's what our sources tell us, Darlene. So a any idea? First of all, you know, we'll just start off with this. Where are you guys right now? We are actually in Chicago right now. In Chicago? Now, what would you be doing? What would you be doing in Chicago, Darlene? We are stuck at O'Hare Airport. Uh -huh. uh, we're staying at the Hilton at O'Hare um, because our flight to Winnipeg was um, canceled today. Your flight to Winnipeg? Yes. Was canceled today? Yes. Are you moving here, Darlene? Are you, what, what are you guys doing coming to Winnipeg? We're just visiting Winnipeg this week. You just, oh, you just decided December 11th right before Christmas, just to come up here to uh, shovel some snow? Well, absolutely. We have a lot of good friends there. Okay. Like Doug Brown. There you go. Well, yeah. I haven't, I haven't exactly heard Milt Stiegel making plans with me since he's coming up here. 
Oh, okay. Well, maybe it's a surprise. Maybe you, you know what, Darlene? There's one other you. thing. There's one other piece of evidence here that makes this awfully suspicious. There's a whole thing that Milt Stiegel does not spend money if he can if he can avoid it at all costs. Okay. So, I'm, are the Blue Bombers playing for this trip? Are you guys to come up here? No. Who's playing for the trip? <laughs> oh, 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 there's Milt hemming and hawing in the back. Who's paying for he the trip? He said that Chase was paying for the trip. Chase, Chase is paying for the trip. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. He's so, been doing uh, a little modeling on the side. So. Like I said, if, if, if Milt was actually paying for his family to come up to Winnipeg, this would be a first in Milt's CFL professional football <laughs> career. That's true. I will tell you that's that right now. True. I have one that's more question for true. you, Darlene. One more question yes. for you before we go back to Milton. Uh, do you happen to know whether that nice little uh, Ford Escape that Milt Stegall's leasing from the Bombers for as long as he's playing for the team, whether he's actually planning on returning that or not in the near future? Uh, he plans on returning it when he's no longer a Bomber. Okay, so uh, is it being shipped up here right now, or do we just leave it at home? Well, when he's no longer a Bomber, okay. Carl will definitely go back to the Bombers. Okay. I, I I have a question. Apparently he's still a bomber, right? <laughs> well, obviously, yes. His contract's yes. done and everything like that, and apparently he's on his way back here. How long are you guys staying for, darling? I'm sorry? How long are you guys planning on staying up here for? In Winnipeg? Yeah. We're actually kind of keeping it open, uh, keeping our options open, so we're just going to come up, and we haven't decided when we're leaving yet. An open-ended trip to Winnipeg. Darling, I have a yes. question for you. <laughs> For Darlene, I have a question for you, and you can confirm or deny this. This uh, more relates confirm to you. Confirm or deny, okay. You can confirm or deny. Uh, there's been rumors circulating that uh, there's potential you may be uh, carrying another slot back right now. <laughs> I can definitely deny that. Oh, deny that, okay. Right. okay. okay. Yes, no, no more Chase that. Hamiltons. Okay, we have to take a quick break here, Darlene, but when we come back, we'll get some more definitive questions and answers from Milt Stiegel on the spin zone on CJOB 68. Welcome back. Well, we just finished talking to the boss of the Stiegel family, uh, Darlene Stiegel, and she confirmed that Milt Stiegel is on route to Winnipeg, an open-ended trip to do uh, to do a little sightseeing and visiting. Milt, what are you doing coming up here? Uh, I heard it's a great place to be in the winter this time of year, but <laughs> that open-ended means when it drops below what, minus five, it, 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 it closes in. <laughs> hey, Mill, let me ask you, uh, while you're here, are you going to be meeting with the Bomber Brass about your future? Yeah, yeah, we'll talk. We've talked, and uh, we'll, we'll talk, definitely. Now, are you open for negotiation, or have you already got? Uh, have, you, have you already decided in your mind what you're going to do next year? Uh, for the most part, it, it, it's been decided. It is a done deal. Now, hold on, here's the whole thing that, that caught me in it, Milt. Obviously, you revealed to me earlier today that you were on your way up here, but you made a very strong point in the sense that if you were actually retiring, the Bombers still probably would fly your family up here just like they're doing right now, would they not? Very true. Yeah, it would be very a big true. announcement, and they would, you know, you would obviously want your family here if you were going to retire from the organization, right? Very true. You know, any major decision, you want your your family there. That's not saying I'm I'm going to retire. It's not saying I'm. Oh well, no, you're not going to. But I'm just saying it leaves you the possibility. Yeah, you know, you want you want you want your family there when you make a major. I think it's a major decision. You know, so I would definitely you know want my family there with me. No, no, Mel. I'm I, I'm going to say this on uh, as more of a fan um, from the people I've talked to over the past uh, weeks and months uh, since this whole speculation about uh, you coming back next year came up. I think the fans, from what I've gathered, the fans understand. If you wanted to hang them up, you know what, they'd say, thank you, Milt, we've loved you for so long, you, you're amazing, and uh, you'll always have that love here in Winnipeg. But, I mean, just to, even at the CFL Awards, you saw it yourself where they're chanting, one more year, one more year. I mean, they don't That's expect, gotta affect you. They don't expect, to, they expect you to stay for another five years. I mean, they want to see you come back one more year. They want to see you set that record here at Canada Stadium. They want to see you have a great shot at the Grey Cup next year. And I think after this year, they said, you know what, Milt, you, you you put in your time, we love you, and, and now we, we want to see you walk away into the sunset. That would be the idea. That would be in a, in a perfect world. And, and and you never know. You never know what's going to happen. Like uh, like I said, the decision, we, we have to make the decision. And I appreciate the fans, the way they've treated me over my 12 years, uh, the way they respected me, and, you know, the, the love they've given me, so-called. So, I mean, I, I wish I could have given them more as far as wins and great cups, but... You know, uh, we'll just have to wait and see what happens. You know, Mel, how much does that factor in your decision, though? Obviously, like I said, that was, uh, I mean, that almost got me. Oh, that, that was very excessive. That, you know? it, it had, it, 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 I couldn't base my decision on that. You know, my family is in Atlanta. My wife is, uh, we have businesses in Atlanta, real estate and other things going on that, that have to keep intact. You know, we want to 
eventually one day have some more kids and you know my wife is somewhat overwhelmed so those were the the major uh concerns that i had with my decision okay well you know what i'm, I'm looking at wheeler here and i think we're both prepared to stake our professional radio careers Especially, especially me, yourself, man. <laughs> especially me, because it's really uh, not too uh, storied. Um, Dude, you, you're willing you know, to put a million dollars on the line like that? I think it's a, I think it's done. <laughs> I'm staking my, I'm staking my whole spin zone career on the fact that you're coming back up here. Blue Bombers are going to announce your signing Tuesday or Wednesday this week. Tell me I'm wrong. Well, yeah, that's what I thought. If you if you think you're right, you're right. I'll leave it at that. You know, some people may say you're Houdini or you're. Uh, you can look into the future and tell what's going on. I don't know, but Wheeler, you you, you I, I bet something to less to less. Uh, I, only wanted, I only wanted to talk to Wheeler right now, so I don't know why I'm still talking to you. <laughs> Listen, Mill, I can ask you yes or no straight up. I know I'm not going to get an answer, but when can the people of Winnipeg expect a definitive answer? They'll they'll know this week. This week, can we can we can we get a day? Come on, get man, day, stop ballparking us, man. They'll know before the weekend is out. Well, Milt, you know what? Tomorrow morning at 8.20, right here in Winnipeg, tomorrow morning at 8.20 on the Wheeler and Hal Show, tomorrow morning on Power 97, we are going to have a honk for Milt, and we're going to get the entire city honking. So when that plane lands at the airport, you're going to hear a bunch of horns honking. And hopefully it'll cause a lot of accidents. Thanks for being on the show, Milt Siegel. we see you here in 2007 for another season. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Love you guys. All right, buddy. All right. Has made up his mind about next season, and we'll find out maybe as soon as tomorrow whether Milt Stiegel will play one more year with the Blue Bombers. That is because Stiegel is in Chicago tonight on his way here to Winnipeg. He'll arrive with his entire family, wife Darlene and son Chase, to make the announcement. Stiegel has played his entire 12 year CFL career with the Bombers, and as we all know, one shy of tying two away from breaking the CFL's all time touchdown record of 137. Even at age, 36, Stiegel is still one of the best players in the CFL. Had he not been injured and missed a number of games this season, he could well have been named the league's outstanding player. He spoke with teammate Doug Brown on Brown's radio show tonight, and while he wouldn't come forward with an outright answer, admitted the decision had been made, and he said it's not just about the record or winning a great cup. With jerseys from every era of his entire football career spanning the Blue Bomber locker room, and with his family by his side, some wondered if this was it for Milt Stiegel. Seems like every time I come up here in the offseason, they only cover up my locker. I wonder why that is. So I don't know if that's a sign or not. But uh, uh, I want to thank everybody in Lau and Brendan for flying me and my family up for this occasion. And, uh, you know, it's been a tough decision. Uh, we had to weigh a lot. We had to take a a lot of things in consideration, uh, my wife being at home with my son and everything we had going on, but uh, Milt Stiegel has played his last game. Milt Stiegel is retiring. Uh, it, it's time to move on. You know, we got to take care of some things at home, and, uh, you know, we just had to decide to do that. And I, and I wish I could, but some things have to be taken care of. Uh, it's unfortunate right now that I, I really can't answer anything about it right now. We have a flight to catch an hour, so we, we, we really have to get going. So. Uh, I just want to say thank you for everything, and uh, before I leave, I want to say uh, you all have just been Charles Roberts, so uh, <laughs> no, w w I'm going to come back and play one more year. I'm going to come back and play one more year. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm an entertainer, I'm a comedian, so you, you got to have some fun, so no. Nah. Um, I'm definitely coming back and playing one more year. Uh, hopefully my son will finally realize what's going on because uh, I go home in the off season. I don't keep many balls, but my 100th touchdown ball, my son is in the backyard playing with it. And so I'm like, I guess my wife doesn't care about what I do. But <laughs> no, she, she, she's backed me 100%. She's been through a lot, and I love her, and I thank her for it. And she always says, uh, you can let you play another year. What are you going to give me? And, you know, I try to give her something special. But. Uh, this is great for me. I'm happy to be coming back another year. And a lot had to d depend on, you know, what was going to be here. And the fact that they brought Coach Barry in, they brought some talent here. And, and this is the best situation I've been in in a while. Of course, last year would have been better if we had went in on a better note. But this year is, is really looking good. So that has some, uh, some bearing on what my decision was going to be this year. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, if we start at training camp tomorrow, I'm ready. 
with the blessing of his family, he will be back for one more season in blue and gold colors. It'll be Stiegel's 13th season in the CFL, and he's not coming back just to get the touchdown record. Wife Darlene wouldn't agree to that. No, Milt's playing uh, likely one last year because he believes the Bombers are on the right track to winning that elusive Grey Cup ring. At the beginning of the year, it was a 0% chance, and then as time went on, uh, my wife said, well, maybe you can still play a little bit more. We might give you another year. And then after the season, it was 50-50. And, you know, we talked about it. It took a few weeks, and uh, we came to this decision. Running a one-year contract extension that is thought to include a small raise over his last contract, he has said all along that his decision to play or to retire would be based solely on what's best for his family. But the allure of a Grey Cup ring was just too much for number 85, who has so far been shut out from a Grey Cup in his first 12 seasons in the CFL. Uh, I think the team is in the right direction to make something happen. I'm not just talking about making the playoffs. I'm not just talking about having a home playoff game. I'm talking about winning the Grey Cup. And, of course, that, that starts with Coach Barry. Um, ultimately, um, you know, like I said, we talked about this for two years. You know, we started family, Milt would um, retire. But, I, you know, obviously every year there are different dynamics. Um, really, I told Milt, I said, tell me what you want to do and tell me why. And he said, I want to go back to Winnipeg. Stiegel has 136 career touchdowns and remains just one shy of tying and two away from breaking the all-time league record. But he says the record didn't even factor into the decision-making process to return for another season. Like I said, I won't lie and say I don't want it, but if I don't get it, it's not a big concern. Man. It's not a big concern. If that was the case, I would have said I'm coming back to get the touchdown record. I just need to win the Grey Cup. I don't need to go 18-0. That would be nice. I just want to win the Grey Cup. Despite missing four games last season, Stiegel still topped the 1,000-yard mark for an eighth straight year. And the return of Milt will mean the Bombers will once again have one of the top receiving cores in the league. I'm really glad to have Milt here again. In terms of uh, learning the offense, Milt doesn't need to do that this year. He's going to come into an offense that he already knows, which means that he should be able to hit the ground running instead of feeling his way through it. You know, a lot of the talk has been, how would you replace uh, a Milt Stiegel on the field in terms of a slot back? But I think uh, an either, even bigger point is how we would replace him in this locker room. You know, it would be a tremendous void because he provides so much leadership to so many guys. Milt Stiegel announcing today that... He is coming back for another season, 13th in the Canadian Football League. But Milt, behind every great football player, every great man, we know that there's an even greater woman. And Darlene, <laughs> we know this decision was yours. How tough was it on you to have Milt play one more season? Well, we've been talking about sort of the one more season for a couple of years now. Um, the plan was once we decided to start a family, then he would retire. Or he would retire and then we'd start a family, something like that. But... Two years later, you know, our son's two, and um, I knew that it was imminent that Milt was going to say he wanted to come back for another year. So basically my question to him was, you know, what do you want to do and why do you want to do it? And he said that he wanted to come back to Winnipeg one more year. I said, okay, why? And he said basically because he believes in the possibilities of this club and that he really feels like things are headed in a great direction. And because of that, he thinks there's a great chance of winning the Great Cup. And so I asked him, you know, does this have anything to do with, you know, breaking the record? <laughs> and according to Milt CEO, it doesn't have anything to do with breaking the record. Um, it's all about, you know, the collective, you know, the winning the Great Cup for Winnipeg. Melt, uh, we talked earlier about uh, the sacrifices other people have to make f for you to, to make this happen. Yeah, and then my wife, she makes a big sacrifice. Uh, she's at home, uh, she's running in our businesses, and then she comes home and she has the hardest job of all, trying to take care of Chase Hamilton Stiegel, the, the, the two-year-old Tara. So uh, it's tough, and, you know, I'm, I'm fortunate to have a very loving, understanding mother who comes down from Cincinnati and helps out my wife for six months. So... Uh, not only my wife, but my mother makes a sacrifice. Of course, my wife makes the biggest one at all, but i got to give some credit to my mother also for helping out. Arlene, for six months of the year, Milt's up here having fun, playing football, playing a kid's game. Also, uh, kid recognizes that. <laughs> kidding around with uh, a lot of the media. What's he like at home? Um, you know, the one thing about Milt that I tell people all the time is Milt's always the same. Um, he's the same whether or not he's in front of the camera or unless we're, you know, hanging out at home or he's in church or even on the field most times. But um, I, I think that, you know, the person you see, that really is, you know, what you get all the time. And uh, Milt, uh, Darlene tells me that uh, you're not the best looking one in the family anymore. 
Well, no, I, I'll have to give it to Chase. I mean, <laughs> Minnie Milt, he looks pretty good. And, you know, like I always say, the there are two great-looking people on this earth now. Yeah. My father is gone, so Chase and I are, are the two prettiest men or the two prettiest people on this earth right now. <laughs> and I just gave birth to him. Yeah. Right. And they both love the microphone. <laughs> Chase, thank you very much. Darlene, thank you. And Milt, thank you for one more season. And good luck and uh, get the record. But most importantly, get the great cup. Thank you very much. And uh, hopefully uh, part of my uh, contract was if I come, came back, you were going to get a better pair of shoes because your suits always look nice, but your shoes looks like you've been kicking rocks or something, man. You know, so get some I, better I, shoes. When I came here today, I was looking at my shoes going, he's going to get me. You look, at him, you look at him any longer, you're going to be blind. So don't look at him any longer. <laughs> okay. Milt Stiegel, Darlene Stiegel, and uh, guest appearance by Chase. That has been Off the Bench. Because of what we described we made and the direction we're going in. And I, and I know... Uh, the personnel in charge are not going to let uh, anything where well, we're going to backslide. We're only going to get better. And last year, you know, we were, what, 70 minutes away from being in the Eastern Conference Finals, and I thought we would have got there. We'd have been in the Great Cup. But the thing is with Milt is I'm not going to have to teach him the offense this year, and Milt's not going to have to come in and learn an offense this year. He's going to be able to come in and pick up where he left off last year, and what he did for us last year wasn't all that bad. Seeing the progress the Blue Bombers have made has renewed his excitement, but Milt's family is involved in the decision making and with business dealings down in Atlanta the Steagles have had to do some juggling I said you know tell me what you want to do and why he said I want to go back to Winnipeg and I said why he said because I really believe in the possibilities of this team I feel like the club is headed in the right direction and I really feel like I have a great chance of winning the great cup and all the business we have going on in Atlanta and you know, uh, with my son and, you know, uh, we had to make sure that my mother was able to come down for another year to help out with uh, my son as far as, you know, my wife goes and our businesses, uh, making sure we had uh, people intact to help run those things where I wouldn't have to be there. So those were the major concerns with those and uh, they're uh, looking pretty good right now. So we decided to uh, give it one more year. So is this it? Never say never, but more than likely, th th this will probably be it. You know, I, there's, like I said, there's only five guarantees in this world, but me coming back next year, uh, after this year, uh, there, there's basically no chance. If, if I'm, I'm saying that right now, but never say never. Milt Stiegel has announced he will return to the Winnipeg Blue Bombers for one more season. The 36-year-old needs just two more touchdowns to break the CFL's all-time mark of 137. I just need to win a great cup. I don't need to go 18-0. That would be nice. I just want to win a great cup. I don't need to make any more big catches, break any more records. Of course, if those things happen, like I said, that would be nice, but I just need to win a great cup. One of the greatest receivers in CFL history will be uh, back in blue and gold as Milt Stiegel is returning to Winnipeg for his 13th season with the uh, Bombers. Stiegel is one touchdown shy of tying George Reed and Mike Pringle for the CFL's all-time lead with 137. Stiegel will be back with the Blue Bombers for the 2007 campaign. The 36-year-old, who is two touchdowns shy of the league's all-time mark of 137, will be back for his 13th season and searching for his first Grey Cup. I just need to win the Grey Cup. I don't need to go 18-0. That would be nice. I just want to win the Grey Cup. I don't need to make any more big catches, break any more records. Of course, if those things happen, like I said, that would be nice, but I just need to win the Grey Cup.